What is driving the demand for the adding of microwave technology to existing fiber optic networks? It's speed of execution, speed to market. Um, in all markets where you might have to make market and take risk, you speed of execution is critical in order to uh, mitigate risk. It's the same light frequencies that transport through fiber optic cables are now free without the refraction that fiber optics have to, to send signals between markets. So the reduction in latency can be anywhere from 30 to 40 percent and that means your trade or your signal to trade gets to market quicker. Um, wireless has its falli fallibilities which include atmospheric conditions um, including heavy snow and rain uh, and also solar and radiation effects in the atmosphere. If you take London to Frankfurt, for example, crossing the channel has its own atmospheric effects caused by the water, the surface of the water, and the, you know, the inclement weather that exists between London and, say, Frankfurt. When that availability gets to the point where trading and sending trade signals is not possible, then we go down the tower to the fibre channel, and of course the customer remains fastest because the weather affects everybody. Tell us about the challenges with capacity and security. The capacity of, of fiber networks is you know, a thousand times that of a wireless network. So you have a lot less capacity, which is why wireless connectivity is oftentimes more expensive. So you have to think very, very carefully of what signals you are going to send between markets on your wireless network versus what might be less latency sensitive and what you might be sending over the fiber network. Because it's not physically constrained, um, it's therefore open to interception. So all of our customers uh, are aware of this, and everybody should be aware of this. Uh, therefore, we need to encrypt our signals. Is the demand for wireless a sign that fiber optic networks have gotten about as fast as they can get? To a degree, and I think we saw that specifically between London and Frankfurt. Our, our current fiber network, it runs at about 8.3 milliseconds. It's as straight a line and as taut a piece of fiber as you can imagine. Um, the, our current uh, wireless configuration has us operating at 4.6 milliseconds round trip. Um, so yes, we got to the point where we had no further major advantage in, in fiber optic uh, connectivity. Who ultimately pays for these technology upgrades? In constructing wireless networks, it's, we're you know, talking about tower rights, building rights, um, spectrum licensing, as well as the hardware. It's not inexpensive, it's certainly not trivial, and the fact of the, or the limitation on the capacity means that if we're handing off service to uh, one customer, then that customer would have to pay for all of that, and a, re and a reasonable return on, on capital. Where Perseus has been successful is where we have been able to provide service to multiple customers on the same CapEx build. So for example, um, Basildon, Nisey Basildon through to Eurex, Deutsche Börse and Frankfurt, each spectrum polarity we can manage, we can serve 12 customers with a 10 megabits per second slice each. That reduces the cost for all 12 customers um, compared to the cost of having to go and build it yourself. The early adoption is the end users, the market makers, the people who have most risk, and then the exchanges, of course, also see the advantage of getting their market data and their product set out to as many of their customers as possible. Is global wireless transmission possible? Yeah, it's interesting because um, when we talk about connecting global markets, there's inevitably bodies of water between them, and the technology currently doesn't enable us to cross say the North Atlantic. So the combination of having a fundamentally fast big pipe fiber network and being able to augment that with wireless connectivity on the terrestrial portions is where, is where we come from. So we have connectivity across the Atlantic, the Pacific, the South Atlantic, connecting major markets in Brazil, Europe, North America and Asia. And on the endpoints of those submarine cable crossings, we tie in a wireless network. Uh, on, the, on the metro regions and on short spans, say between um, exchange locations in and around the metro, we're also developing that, but because we're a global company, we've approached the, the biggest challenges first.